Good morning, friends. Welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church. We're delighted that you have chosen to worship the Lord with us on this beautiful day. And a special welcome to all those joining us online as well. We're glad you're here. We have lots of announcements this morning. The beautiful flowers you see around this church are from the Barquette family. We said a formal goodbye to Lee yesterday. So, um, and we thank them for leaving uh, the beautiful flowers for our worship this morning. We also have a quilt in the narthex in memory of Gary Reeder, Chris Turner's father. So please go by, tie a knot, and say a prayer for Chris, and especially her mom, Barb, as, uh, as they navigate this time. Our Lord's Prayer study begins tomorrow at noon in Wheelis. Um, if, if you're in that group, you should have gotten an email from me um, about a week ago. If you didn't, no worries, just come. Uh, no prep necessary, just show up in Wheelis at noon tomorrow. You're welcome to bring a lunch to eat if you would like to do so. Um, our Zoom group is we'll meet Thursday night at 7. You should have gotten an email from me if you registered before last week. With the Zoom link, I will send it out again this week. If for some reason you don't get it before Thursday, please shoot me an email and I'll make sure you have that. There are many mission opportunities coming up and um, as you can see, this card is full on the back. There are many ways for you to get involved in Grace, so hopefully um, you can check that, leave it on your seat or turn it in with your offering as you leave and, and we would love to get you more involved. Next Sunday afternoon is a young adult gathering. I uh, hope young adults will join us for that. You can check your interest on the back of this card as well. We also have new members, and they might all be 11 o'clockers, but please find them, get to know them. Patrick Item, who has been with us for a while, uh, officially joined our church. Jeff Covington, Valerie Russell's husband joined last week, as well as Michael Zinnia and Ian Gross, the Gross family. Ian goes to preschool. He is a memorable chapel attendee. I will say that. And I love him. And I'm so glad, so glad that they are here. Kara is going to go over our memory verse with us. All right. So I've been thinking about this all week, every night in the middle of the night when I can't sleep. I'm remembering our memory verse, which I think is how it's supposed to work. So, are you all ready? Okay. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. You know what, Pastor Tracy? They didn't even hardly look. They didn't. They I'm didn't very look. proud. All right, so because you did so good, we're going to do it one more time. Ready? Rejoice Joyous. always. Pray, Pray without, without ceasing. ceasing. Give, give thanks, thanks in, in all circumstances. circumstances. For, for this, this is, is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. you. First Thessalonians 5. 16 to 18. They're doing very good. good. Thank you. They are doing good. And Pastor Kerr, did you notice how many fingers are pointing back at us when they say you? I, I, I better get on it. I better get on it. Friends, God wants to be known everywhere. In the hidden places of our hearts, in the comfort of our homes, in every corner of the world, in the farthest reaches of creation. God is the one who transforms us and heals us. God renews the earth and every creature. So let our praise for God shake the rafters this morning with songs of joy. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins together using the prayer printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. Loving God, we give up too easily. We forget how powerful and generous you are. And we collapse into despair when our wishes are not immediately granted. Give us the courage and strength to keep fighting for what is right. 
to keep asking the hard questions and wrestling with the answers, to continue to call out to you. Give us the faith to stay in conversation with you through all the troubles and hardships of this life, knowing that it's surely you who saves us in Jesus Christ our Lord. In this holy silence, tell God how you have neglected what is important. Come, sit down, let's argue this out. This is God's message. If your sins are blood red, they will be snow white. Believe the good news. We pass the peace because with God's abundant grace and mercy, we have enough to share. Share this peace with those around you saying, the peace of Christ be with you. Guys. Keep passing the peace. <laughs> and also with you. <laughs> All right. Please join us in singing.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The first scripture lesson today is from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Listen now to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When the news reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he had a proclamation made in Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. No human being or animal, nor herd or flock, shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered with sackcloth, and they shall cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. Who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. This is the word of the Lord. Our sermon lesson this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. Listen again for God speaking to you. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. 
and her daughter was healed instantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven. Yes. Don't interrupt me. I'm praying. But you called me. Called you? I didn't call you. I'm praying. Our Father, who art in heaven. There you did it again. Did what? Called me. You said, Our Father, who art in heaven. Well, here I am. What's on your mind? I didn't mean anything by it. You know, I was just saying my prayers for the day. I always say the Lord's Prayer. It makes me feel good. All right, then. Go on. Hallowed be thy name. Well, hold it. What do you mean by that? By what? By hallowed be thy name. It means, it means, good grief, I don't know what it means. How should I? It's just part of the prayer. By the way, what does it mean? It means holy, honored, set apart, wonderfully different. Hey, that makes sense. I never thought about what Hallowed meant before. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do you really mean that? Sure, why not? Well, then what are you going to do about it? Do? Nothing, I guess. I just think it would be neat if you got control of everything down here like you have up there. Have I got control of you? I go to church. And that isn't what I asked you. What about your spending habits and your temper? And how much time you spend on things that don't feed your soul? Stop picking on me. I thought you were praying for my will to be done. If that is to happen, it will have to start with the ones praying for it. Like you, for example. Oh, all right. I guess I do have some hang-ups, and now that you mention it, I could probably name a few more. I haven't thought about it until now, but I would really like to cut some things out, you know? Be free? Good. Now we're getting somewhere. We'll work together. You and I together can have victory. I'm proud of you. Lord, I need to finish up here. This is taking a lot longer than it usually does. Give us this day our daily bread. Yeah, you need to cut down on bread. You're a little bit overweight. Hey, wait a minute. I just got off a cruise. (laughs) What is this, criticize me day? Well, prayer is a dangerous thing. You could wind up changed, you know. Keep on praying. I'm interested in the next part of your prayer. I'm scared to go on. What are you scared of? I know what you'll say. Try me and see. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. What about Lisa? See, I knew it. (laughs) I knew you would bring her up. She told lies about me and she cheated me out of some money and she has never apologized or paid me back. Well, what about your prayer? I didn't mean it where she's concerned. (laughs) It's not much fun carrying the load of bitterness around inside, is it? No, but I'll feel better as soon as I can get my money back. She'll wish she never did me harm. You won't feel any better. You'll feel worse. Revenge isn't sweet. Think how unhappy you already are. I can change all of this. You can? How? Forgive Lisa. You may never see your money again, but your heart will be right. But Lord, I can't forgive her. Then I can't help you. Oh, you're right. You always are. And more than I want revenge on Lisa, I want to be right with you. I will forgive her. 
help Lisa to find the right road in life. She's bound to be awfully miserable now that I think about it. Somehow, some way, show her the right way. There now, how do you feel? Hmm, not bad, not bad at all. In fact, I feel pretty great. You know, I don't think I'll have to go to bed uptight tonight for the first time since I can remember. Maybe I will finally get enough rest. You're not through with your prayer. Go on. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Good, good. I'll do that. Just don't put yourself in a place where you can be tempted. What do you mean by that? Well, quit watching inappropriate movies and television. Change some of your friendships. Don't use me for an escape hatch. I, I don't understand. Sure you do. You've done it lots of times. You get caught in a bad situation. You get in trouble, and then you come running to me. I'm always glad to help you. <coughs> but I wish you would let me in before you get in deep trouble. I'm sorry, Lord. I, I really am. I didn't expect anything to happen like it did. Go ahead. Finish your prayer. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do you know what would bring me glory? What would really make me happy? No, but I'd like to know. I want to please you. I can see how great it would be to be one of your followers. Well, you just answered the question. I did? Yes. The one thing that would bring me glory is to really have people like you truly love me. And I can see that happening between us. There's no telling what we can do together. Amen. Well, what did you think about that conversation with God? Oh. I have told you in this month of prayer to ask, seek, and knock unashamedly. Just tell God what you want. I've encouraged you to be persistent in your prayers. Don't give up. We're the microwave generation. We want everything done in 30 seconds. The eternal God has all the time in the world and more. Keep asking because God will respond. But can we argue with God? Do we have the, be, the ability to make a case for what we want? Will God listen and consider our argument. I remember when my oldest daughter asked for a cell phone. She was 13 years old. They were new, and we immediately said no. Then she made her case. She was on the softball team. What if practice was over early? What if she had to stay late? How would she communicate? It's a safety issue, she argued. And it would make our lives more convenient, saving all that time we wasted sitting in our car, waiting for her to finish practice. Her argument swayed us. We changed our minds and got her a cell phone, albeit with strict parameters in place. Is God like that? Will God change God's mind? If we know the book of Jonah, we have to say yes. The Ninevites received a message of judgment from Almighty God. Forty days more and Nineveh will be overthrown. Jonah preaches in the streets of the city. The message is clear. The doom of that city is in sight. God is calling them to account for their actions and will delay judgment no longer. Jonah's message had a remarkable effect. Maybe the Ninevites were just so hungry to hear someone from God say something useful and meaningful. Maybe Jonah was a powerful preacher. 
Maybe they were scared to death at the thought of total destruction. Whatever the reason, the people of Nineveh believed God. They all, even the king, cried out to God for mercy. They turned from evil and turned toward God. God saw their heartfelt change and God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Mm. You know, there are only two people in the Gospels that Jesus describes as having great faith. Neither is in Jesus' inner circle. In fact, they were both Gentiles, pagans. One is a Roman soldier, a centurion who comes to Jesus to find healing for his servant. The other is the Canaanite woman from our gospel reading today. The woman who argues with Jesus and wins. She changed his mind. Jesus was attempting to get away from the crowds for a private retreat with his disciples. But strangely, there's a woman in the area who has heard about him. She's probably a widow or else her husband would have sought Jesus out. She has a very sick toddler. She's desperate for help. The woman lays out her problem before Jesus and he does not answer her, the text tells us. Have you ever felt like Jesus was ignoring you? His silence has disturbed me more than once. I have had pressing problems I brought to his attention through prayer, and I've heard nothing from him. No, yes, I will help. No, be patient, Tracy. No, it ain't going to happen. Nothing but silence. As I think about it, though, silence is not rejection. Silence is not even the ignoring of a situation. Silence from Jesus is always his active watching and listening. Silence from Jesus always has a purpose to draw faith out of us or to teach us something. There's something we have not learned yet. Is there something more this woman needs to know? Does he want her to be sure that he is not like the witch doctor so prevalent in her culture? Does he want her to know without a doubt that it is he and not magic or spells that heals her daughter? Does he want his disciples to learn something in this silence? Does he want them to see what great faith really is in this woman? If he had responded right away, they would not have seen her persistence. Continuing to follow and call out for Jesus, this woman gets on everyone's nerves. And the disciples ask Jesus to send her away. It is the disciples Jesus answers with, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But surely she hears him. Jesus is not trying to be cruel. He's just stating the facts. He's verbalizing what Israel believed. He's verbalizing what his disciples believed. His theology is correct. He's referring to Ezekiel 34, where a shepherd is promised to Israel. The Jews, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are the chosen people to whom Messiah was promised. And frankly, Jesus has his hands full with them. God's faithful covenant was with the Jews and Jesus' ministry is first and foremost to them. Yet Jesus still does not send her away. Even in the face of opposition, the Canaanite woman comes and kneels, prostrating herself before Jesus. She's moving closer and closer, asking him for help. Jesus finally speaks to her and says, it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. You know, the Jews had a slang term for Gentiles. It was dog. Mangy, wild street dogs. Jews did not allow dogs inside their homes. 
This is not the Greek word Jesus uses here. Jesus uses the word for little dogs or house pets. Gentiles did have dogs as pets, and so this woman knew what he meant. I'm feeding my children, Jesus tells us. It's not fair to take food away with them. But then this woman, this incredible woman, cleverly points out that house pets often get food that falls off the table. At least that's true at my house. And it doesn't really fall. It gets uh, handed down. But what an argument. It is then that Jesus praises her faith is great. It's then that her daughter is healed. I believe Jesus was going to heal her daughter all along. I believe this healing may be why he took his disciples to this foreign district in the first place. Jesus has gone out of his way to help just one person before. And he wasn't going to let theology stand in the way of helping this woman. This miracle is a clue to God's all-inclusive intentions. But I also believe Jesus enjoyed this argument with her, delighted that she was courageous and thoughtful enough to argue with him, to argue for her daughter, whom they both loved. I also believe Jesus wanted us to have this story, to learn what intercessory prayer is all about, relying on his grace, his mercy, his power, and his love, and not giving I think I've changed God's mind once that I know of. During my first year of seminary, Sandy, my sweet, sassy, protective little Yorkshire terrier, coded during surgery. They were able to bring her back, but she remained unresponsive. On the way to the vet hospital to say our goodbyes, I prayed. Please save her. I made my case. I don't think I can do seminary without Sandy. If you're really calling me to this task, God, I've got to have Sandy. I argued. When we got to the hospital and Jack took Sandy into his arms, she peed all over him. The vet said that was a good sign. We laughed with joy, but she soon came around and came back to us with kisses all over our faces. And it wasn't too long before that fire was in her little eyes again. So I think God listened to my argument, and I won. Of course, there are plenty of times that I have argued, pleaded, begged and the answer was no I did not win my case only later and sometimes much later I found out what God was really up to and I became so thankful for that no more on that next week But my friends, for this week, never forget how marvelous God is and how God longs to give good gifts to his children. Believe Jesus' love, grace, and mercy enough to ask for what you need. Argue your case. Admit your mistakes and repent like the Ninevites. Convince God that what you are asking for is good and right and will bring God glory. God will love it. And you might just change God's mind.
Friends, as we come to communion, I invite you to follow along in the prayer in your bulletin. I know it's bolded, but you can meditate on the words as I say them. And then give a good hearty amen at the end of the prayer. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south and from east and west to sit at table in the kingdom of God. Our Savior invites us all who trust in him to share the feast that he has prepared. Let us pray. God, we do thank you for making us, for loving us, for saving us, for calling us to be salt and light in our world. We thank you for Jesus, your word made flesh and the redemption won in him. We thank you for your Holy Spirit to guide, convict, and comfort us filling us with your joy and peace. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be for us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now with the confidence of God's own children, we pray the prayer our Lord taught. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Each time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do proclaim our risen Lord and Savior until he comes again. For friends, he is coming again. These are the gifts of God for us the people of God. Will the servers please come forward?
Let us pray. God of abundance, with the bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ. Make us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of the Holy Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We give thanks to our God with all our hearts because in God's steadfast love, God has provided us with everything we need. And in response to God's great faithfulness, we are called to give gifts of our own. You can give online by visiting gracepc.org or by using the boxes in the back of the sanctuary. Um, I also want to call your attention to the prayer request cards um, in the pews. Um, if you are in need of prayer, we have a group of folks who meet every Sunday afternoon to pray over those requests. Um, so, do, so if you have a request, uh, do not hesitate to fill one of those out. Let us give to God with a spirit of gratitude and praise. Through every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, you are my portion. We give thanks to our God with all our hearts because received these gifts we offer, O God, received the gift of our lives from the smallest to the largest, bless them all to your transforming work in the world. Amen. Who's ready to argue with God? Anybody? All right. You may win, you may lose but you will always receive more grace, more mercy, more peace, more love than you can ever imagine. As you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.